Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva, where I'm now joined by Hélène Molinier, hope I got that right, yeah. your Senior Policy Advisor on Innovation for UN Women, which I believe is the latest UN agency to be set up about a decade ago. This is your first time you've been to this. Yeah. Um, what brings you here? Well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, indeed, we are new, the newly created organization. We're championing um, women's rights. Uh, we're championing gender equality and uh, empowerment of women. And so it's very important for us to be here because more and more we see that uh, there is a gender imbalance in the world of innovation and specifically, specifically in the world of AI. So we want to be here to uh, meet with partner to discuss this and to share experience on this issue. Now, the question might be slightly provocative, but does it matter whether it's men or women who are in charge of AI? Yeah, actually it matters a lot. We also see technology as something that is gender neutral, but when we look at all the solutions that are being developed, if you do studies and analysis on the impact it has on the population, you see that it, most of the time it impacts women and men differently. Give me examples. So we see it with a lot of AI technology, actually. I don't know if you've seen recent articles that showcase that personal assistant as sexist. Uh, you have a majority of people that prefer to actually give orders to female voice. Uh, you see that a lot of the response that uh, this personal assistant can give sometimes um, are um, are actually being designed by men. When uh, you ask sexual questions or if you are uh, asking uh, questions about um, do you fancy me, do you would like to be my girlfriend, you see the response that it provided that is actually quite shocking. Instead of having the personal assistant that is more educative about the response and explain about gender equality, you see things that are uh, responses like, oh, I'd blush if I could, and uh, UNESCO has just done a publication on that. And more importantly, what we see is that the response it provides are different. Um, again, if you are a man and you ask Siri to find Viagra for you, they can t give you lots of direction. If you're a woman and you ask, where can I find contraception, it won't give you any answers. So we see a lot of bias like that. We see that, uh, for example, Amazon did an um, uh, AI pilot to try to use um, uh, machine learning for screening resume. And basically the machine trained itself because of the data it was using to identify what was the best candidate and the best candidate at Amazon is a man. Uh, so every resume that had the word woman was set aside by the machine. So we have many examples like that. And yet others will say nothing stopping women from developing AI machine technology? So that's actually wrong. It's true that when you look at ability, nothing stops women. You look at PISA scores, girls and boys have the same scores. But then when you look at where women are actually pursuing careers or studying, you see a lot of differences. And it's because of lack of opportunity and of social norms and cultural norms. And what we realize is that because uh, we live in an equal society, because of stereotypes, because of uh, what uh, environment girls are um, being raised, they don't see these careers are opportunities for us. So I think you, we talked earlier before we, this interview that you created a new uh, initiative called Gender Innovation Principles. Yes. So that's something that. we created with 30 partners from both the public and private sector, basically to try to see what are the solutions that we can concretely bring forward. Because if the issues are social norms, it's actually changes that need to happen at the government level, in, uh, in the, uh, the business world, in the education world. And so this principle can be embraced by any kind of organization. And basically people who sign up uh, commit to five things. First, they commit to have uh, high level commitment uh, from the senior management so that gender is seen as a priority uh, all through the organization. Second, they try to identify better how to integrate gender in the design stage because we see that this is where most of the mistakes happen and it takes a long time to change. And by integrating gender, we mean having more women on the team, but not only. Also to train uh, your staff because having a woman is not, a woman in, in herself, she's not a gender expert. We're all gender expert in our own rights and we all have bias and stereotype that we bring to the table. So it's important to have the staff and especially the technical staff train on those, um, on those issues. I mean, you're already in the UN here with uh, with their you know sustainable development goals. So, who is your message going out to while you've been here? 
So our message is really across sectors, and I think that's really important that we look at uh, the research world, we look at the private sector, we look at government, because as I said, it's not something that one uh, single entity can fix, and we all can have impact uh, in our different circles. So as you leave here and go back to your offices in New York, are you more confident than when you arrived? Or do you think you made some progress today? No, I am. I mean, every person I talk to and every person that saw my presentation come back, uh, came back to me to say, oh, we, we had never seen uh, also these issues being um, discussed through that lens. So I think it's uh, one of the presenters talk about being bilingual. And I think it's very important that the world of social science and technology meet more often and that we have those discussions. OK, very interesting. So that was Hélène Molinier. Um, from UN Women, based in New York. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.